on this episode of the podcast, we're going to have former WWE diva, actor, artist, and IFBB pro, Crystal Marshall, join us for an exciting episode on what it was like in the WWE days to where she's at now. So before we jump into that episode, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. this fantastic episode we have a very very special guest former wwe diva crystal marshall how are you i'm good how are you i'm good it's good to have you on the show thank you for having me so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you transitioned into the world of professional wrestling (laughs) how did i trans transform myself transition um I feel like a lot of people know this story, but I'll, I'll tell it again. So um, I'll be very honest. It was never a dream of mine to become a wrestler or a diva. It was something that I enjoyed watching as a kid, but it was not something that uh, I cultivated <laughs> from my youth. Um, so I worked for a while in California in the Hollywood scene. I was a model on Deal No Deal and Prices, right? So I was kind of making my way up through that circuit of models and video, um, Vixen modeling and all of that stuff. I did uh, music videos for 50 Cent and Mace and Jill Scott and the Black Eyed Peas and who else? A few, a few different artists. So I was, you know, trying to navigate um, myself in that field and I didn't have any representation. So it was just the old school way of getting your breakdown sheets and kind of showing up and you know, doing work the hard way. Um, but right before I got my opportunity with WWE to compete in the Diva Search, I did get a manager and she actually booked me on Deal No Deal. So I was one of the original briefcase models uh, for the first few seasons. Well, not first few episodes, um, the pilot um, month that we shot. So the first pilot season is the one that I was a part of. But after we finished filming, she was kind of like, you know, girl, I don't really have anything else for you. There's nothing coming down the pipeline. And, and I was like, there's got to be something. Because at that point, like I would built such a momentum of projects like back to back to back. And I was just really excited. Um, and she's like, well, there's this one thing, but I, I don't I don't think you'd be interested. And I was like, well, what is it? And she said, um, WWE, they are holding an audition to find the next diva. And I was like, Yeah. That's it. That's exactly what I want to do. So my backstory with wrestling, my parents immigrated here from Barbados and my grandmother, she lived in Brooklyn and she didn't have cable. So we had a few channels when I go visit her. And one of the things that we watched together was wrestling. She was a huge wrestling fan. She loved, um, gosh, the Brooklyn brawler and junkyard dog. Junkyard dog was her favorite. Um, so that was kind of the thing that we bonded over. You know, and then, you know, growing up in high school, um, you know, obviously that was a hot era with The Rock and Stone Cold and all of that. So who didn't like it? So for me, I was like, yeah, you know, this is this is what I want to do. And uh, I remember my manager calling me and said, well, Deal and Jill got picked up. You guys are going to be compensated well. This is going to be a huge thing for you, for all of you guys. It could snowball into something fantastic. And I was like, no, that's that's not what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Um, so I had to decide between WWE or Deal No Deal. And I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but um, Meghan Markle, she married Prince Harry, and I still feel like I could have had a shot considering (laughs) the Deal No Deal background. But um, yeah, um, yeah, it was a a wild ride. So I think I made the right decision. It sounds like (laughs) it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I can only imagine what it was like to, to go from one directly into something that's I I guess at the time it was similar but different at the same time oh totally different you know it's so funny because I hear now from some friends that are still in the business about how different um the culture is uh 
at WWE, at TNA, at AEW. It's just a different business now. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of things that are the same, but comparing it between, you know, game show modeling and professional wrestling, it was, it was a crash course in reality. And, uh, so obviously I did not win the diva search, but John Laurinaitis called me. He's like, Hey kiddo, you know, uh, you didn't win, but we see some potential in you. I really feel like you should consider taking this developmental contract. It's a good thing. You know, you just go down there, you prove yourself, you take some hard bumps. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to pack my life up from LA and I'm going to move to McDonough, Georgia and take some hard bumps. And I had no idea what that meant. Nothing, nothing in the slightest, but I was young and adventurous and I just was ready for something that was exciting. So, and that's what I did. Now it was, was the developmental for them at the time. Was that before OVW was that deep South Deep South wrestling? So here's what's funny. So they had both at the same time. They had OVW in Kentucky and then they developed Deep South Wrestling in Georgia. So um, I ended up going to Deep South with Bill DeMott, which I love Bill. Bill's a hard ass, but I, I love <laughs> I love Bill. Um, so, yeah, it was cool. I, um, I got exposed to a lot in a short period of time. And, you know, I feel like if I could describe the way that I felt then coming in as this extremely green person that know knows absolutely nothing about the business I mean I don't know how I wasn't completely petrified you know because here are these these workers that came from they came up the hard way and a lot of them are there they're getting paid under contract and some of them weren't you know so I'm sure that there was a mixed bags of 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 emotions with having me there you know so um I I worked as hard as I could um I tried to be respectful and I tried to just absorb as much um as I could about how to, how to wrestle and things that I couldn't grasp. And there's a lot that I couldn't grasp, but I tried to supplement with just sticking around, mopping the mats, listening to the stories, trying to figure out who are these people, what inspired them? Um, and what does it mean to me and how am I going to make my place and how am I going to connect with this business and this craft? Um, so yeah, that, that was my focus. So when you got called up, um, I, I think I read somewhere, and I, I don't know if it's accurate or not, but you came in as a uh, as a backstage interview. Yes. Mm-hmm. What was that like? Um, <laughs> again, it's like the only way that I can really describe it is imagine that you're a little kid and someone tells you, all right, I know you love football, but this is a Super Bowl. And we just decided that we're going to have you interview all the players on both teams. You'll be great. Go ahead. Just, just do it. That was pretty much how I felt. It was very, very intimidating, overwhelming. I didn't want to say something that was wrong. I didn't want to offend anybody. I was just trying to do my best, fly under the radar, not catch any heat, and, yeah, just make the most of it. So. <laughs> and I can only imagine what it would be like just to – to be in that position and to be around some of the bigger stars of that, that era too. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. And it's even still to this day, like I went to an AEW show here in Arlington a couple of weeks ago. And I remember I had this overwhelming experience. I uh, had to use the restroom. So I went back into the, to the women's locker room and I'm just trying to just, you know, like get out of the way and just, you know, and uh, some of the girls were like, Hey, thank you. And I'm just like, for what? <laughs> but it was like, it's such an overwhelming feeling um, because I feel like I came up in the time in WWE um, that was very transitional. You know, we, there was an era before where there were a handful of girls that were great workers and then it switched over to more of like the diva era. Um, but the amount of respect that those girls showed me, like, <laughs> I'm probably going to cry, but it's, it's overwhelming because, you know, I think about all the giants in the business and I just compare myself sometimes and I'm just like, wow, I'm a part of this, you know, and that's a very overwhelming feeling. Um, so yeah, I think that sometimes we don't realize, even though we think we have a small contribution who's watching and what that means to them. So it was a, it was a very humbling experience. 
to say the least. Yeah, and I can, I can again, I can only imagine what it was like to to not only be that type of inspiration for other female wrestlers, but what it's like to be around that environment and get that kind of it's surreal, you know, pat on the back that you know, hey, you affected my life in such yeah, such a way that I'm totally. Here. And I'm looking at these girls, I'm like, you guys are insane. Like, it's crazy to see like how far women's wrestling has evolved. You know, it's it's it has a life of its own now. These girls are working. They look good. They've got great character development, and here they are showing me love. You know, so it's it's a it's a crazy it's a crazy feeling, but yeah, felt good. So I have to ask, um, I, I think, and again, and I think I saw this somewhere online, but I don't know how accurate it is, but your first match, was that with Jillian Hall? <laughs> yes. I had many matches with Jillian. <laughs> what was that like to go out there and be amongst, you know, uh, peers, but to, to be on that main stage like that? You know, it felt really good. It felt natural. It felt like I should have been there the whole time, you know? Um, but I, I, I can't thank Jillian enough. There is so much I learned from her and, uh, she was just kind of like bringing my ass along. Like, come on, this is what we're doing. Let's, let's go. All right. You're fine. You're good. And I'm like, are we done? Yep. We're done. She's just such a pro professional and you know, she's been around forever and she's so good at what she does. I feel like she doesn't get enough credit, you know, for her talent. So yeah, it was, a. Uh, I don't know. You know what's so funny is that I consider myself a pretty shy person um, in certain settings, which is weird because people will be like, what? But um, when you go out there and there's that many people, it's the most, it feels comfortable. It feels like you can't see all of their individual faces anyway. <laughs> so it's a, it's a really good feeling. And I, I do miss that. I miss connecting with fans on that level you know, and being able to pull from them like emotions. That's, that's the best part about it. And see, I can only imagine what that would feel like to, to be amongst thousands of people that are feeding everything that you do is creatively and, and letting you know when you're doing something that they want to see. It's, it's, yeah. I've heard people describe it as, as kind of like an, a, a real large adrenaline. Rush. Yes. Yes. I'm not much of a thrill seeker, but I imagine when people jump out of airplanes and uh, go bungee jumping, I'm sure that feeling is very, very comparable, but there's nothing like it. It's the best feeling ever. (laughs) So when you were coming up uh, in early WWE, what was the best advice somebody gave you? Tuck your chin was one of them. Stay away from boys. From the boys was the other one. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, don't drink Booker's Red Bull was another one. Um, <laughs> yeah, those are some good ones. Those are some. I'm sure there's some more in there, but those were some good ones for sure. <laughs> so, in in your your journey into um, you know professional wrestling, you know getting on the the main stage so to speak Mm -hmm. and and being a part of the main roster um did you have any any matches that you liked the most and that maybe you didn't like you know during that era we the girls especially women on smackdown we didn't get a lot of individual um mat work um, matches we didn't get a lot of them um but i really loved uh when we did any of the cross brand things with raw Lumberjill mac- matches, tag matches, those were always fun. The theme matches, I know a lot of people don't really like them so much, but like the, Hall- the Halloween theme matches, that stuff was fun, you know? And it's, um, yeah, I didn't get a lot of individual match work, but, you know, I worked with Jillian. That was always great. Um, we had a few matches together, Layla and I, which was interesting because we were both so green. And... Uh, <laughs> I was a heel, so here I am with my limited skill set leading her through, you know, matches. And I'll say, like, when I talk about, like, being able to draw emotions out of, you know, the fans and the crowd that's there, like, I always think back about those matches specifically because we both were pretty limited at the time with our skill set. However, we were still able to connect. And I think that's what's beautiful about wrestling. People say, oh, well, it's fake. Well, parts of it obviously are choreographed, but those emotions are real. 
the connection we make with the fans, that's real. The falls, they're real. The bumps, it's real. So um, there's something to be said about that. Um, yeah. So I guess the ones, the few that I did get, they're all my favorite because I didn't have enough. <laughs> So as far and I, I've seen other interviews you've done, and I, you know I'm always curious to know as far as interactions with other uh, divas and superstars right. of, the, of of that era, what what was the the locker room so to speak like in during that time? Oh man, you know it's so different than it is now. Like we were always like walking on eggshells, you know. Like I said, there weren't enough matches for the girls. So everyone was kind of afraid of like pissing off the wrong person and, you know, um, not showing the adequate amount of respect to others and just fucking up overall. Um, it's a lot more lax now, which I think is cool. Um, yeah. So I think a lot of my time was spent backstage bring fucking anxious. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's great to see how things have changed for the better, at least I feel like, because I've always thought that, you know, the, the divas or, you know, the superstars, I guess, is what, what everybody's referring to, you know, everybody now. It, it, I think that you guys had the most unique matches because your ability to tell the story right. was a lot different and, and more people could actually relate to that, I believe, whether you were, you know, male or female. I think it was it was destined to happen. It just took way too long for it. For to sure, for sure. Um, and I love I love the era now. I love seeing the women get in there and mix it up. But I do because I came up in a different era, I do miss a little bit of that special flair that the divas brought. It was a little bit more sexy. I don't think it has to be that, to that extreme, but I do miss those funny tongue in cheek kind of moments that we had also. Um it just screams like classic wrestling um but yeah um it's it's great to see it's it's bizarre honestly i love it and i'm just like wow another match that's a main event match like that's crazy <laughs> so yeah. it is yeah but you know on the, on the same aspect you know like most things i think that type of thing was destined to evolve and I think that with, you know, the, the women of today's product, they're, you know, they're, they're taught to be a little more uh, aerobatic, so to speak, mm -hmm. and, and, and do things that probably weren't what people thought that other people wanted to see at that time. No, I totally agree. Um, there's a lot more flair to it. Um, it's got like a little bit of a Japanese pizzazz to it, a little bit of a Mexican style to it, which I, I personally love a lot more showmanship in the moves and things like that. Um, and I like to see it because I feel like, especially for the women to execute those moves in particular, it's beautiful. Um, and I think it's a good fit that the women are doing it for sure. For sure. And you know, like it's, this didn't happen overnight. Like where these girls are now, like I said before, like we kind of had to, we had our part to play the divas from my era and the women before, you know, like it's all been building for a very long time. And we've been vocal throughout the years about the things that we wanted to do and what we could, could do and how we could perform because there's a lot of women out there that can work honestly, probably better than some of the dudes they can go, but um, they didn't have that platform and they do now. So it's great to see. Exactly. Yep. So, um, what was it? I gotta ask. What was it like working with Teddy Long? <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Teddy just look. Teddy is who Teddy is. He's just exactly what you see. Just laid back, a cool dude. Just like he. That is not a character. That is who he is. <laughs> that is who he is. Yep. Because it was it was interesting to see him come up. Because you know I I know that he was a manager, uh, like of. Harlem Heat at one mm -hmm. point he was a referee yep and then he moved right up on into the general manager yes. position and, and I thought that was very cool to see because you if you aren't watching wrestling enough you, don't you really don't see transitions like but you that. know what though also the transition with Miz watching him transition yes. you know he used to live so when I was at Deep South Wrestling he used to live downstairs for me and I remember him he ate a lot of shit 
he got a lot of shit from a lot of the guys and he worked his ass off to get the respect and to have so much staying power. So when I watch him, I'm like, whoa, like that's crazy to see his transition too. So that's the cool thing about wrestling though, is that if you do it right, they give you space and they allow you to grow and transition. So. And that's, that's definitely important. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in any kind of, uh, you know, position whether it be you know entertainer wrestler whatever the case is you got you gotta do that but you know to your point yeah i mean you watch anything on him and he he took so much crap yeah it was unbelievable yep he never complained he didn't yeah he just ate it and he just kept going and you got to give him his props you know exactly yeah look where he is now totally totally earned absolutely so what was it like to transition from WWE to TNA? You know, I didn't, and I hate to say this because it sounds like I wasn't appreciative, but I didn't give it much thought. It was where I was in my life. I had my son. He was, gosh, he was a little baby. And uh, it was really, um, it was a move for Bobby. And they were like, hey, would you like to be a part of this? And I said, sure. And that's kind of how it worked. But it was great. It was a very, very different experience than WWE, especially at that time for TNA. TNA back then was a lot more, it was a more a smaller production and a lot more laid back. And they were at um, Universal Studios. So it was a very different fixed environment. Yeah. But to be very honest with you, I didn't really connect with many then because I was literally bringing my son to the show. That's how laid back it was. So I was kind of like off to the side, kind of doing my own thing. <laughs> Yeah, and it you know it's it's kind of weird to see how things have gone with them, especially too, just because their whole product has changed. Absolutely. Even I think the name has changed too. Yep, yep. everything's changed. I mean, every, nothing stays the same. You know, whether that's wrestling, it's life. You know, people evolve and change, and you have to keep it going too. Oh God, my dog is in now. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> so. It, uh, as far as and and I'm I'm curious to to get your perspective on this the the ring difference in TNA oh, versus WWE that was confusing was that? that was confusing for me that was um, I had a couple I had a couple spots with Kong and I remember asking about it and she's like don't worry she's like you're gonna be where you need to be. And just hearing uh, feedback from some of the guys, they're just like, yeah, it's weird at first, but you get used to it. So the way that they've kind of articulated it to me was it's like one ring. It's two rings, one ring, and then just look at it that way. So I'm not really a mathematical person, but um, yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> But they've switched back. I mean, they don't even that, use that anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I've heard people say in interviews that they absolutely hated it. And then people like, you know, AJ Styles, for instance, has said he loved Oh, well, it. he lived in it. That's his world, you know? So what do they say? Like, AJ hasn't had, he had four months off, like, once since 2006. I think that was it. Wow. I think I think I read that the other day. He's only had four months off since 2006. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That that is just nuts, especially to for him to have as many kids as he does. And, and well, to... he must have a strong wife. I'll say that. Um, but you know, that's the other thing too. I think that the schedule is very different now. Um, the way that they did it, the, the way that everything's structured, I think that there's a lot more autonomy for people to kind of have relationships and other things going on more than before. So. Yeah. Cause I would imagine you guys were on the road, you um, know, more than half of the year. Yeah, absolutely. I don't even remember. I just know that I was home about two days a week. If we weren't doing a European tour. Yep. Wow. Yep. So what was that like doing, doing uh, overseas? Tours? Oh, that was, that was my favorite. I loved it. I loved it because it's like, I mean, I was so young at the time too, though, like in my early twenties. So I kind of want to hang out with my friends. So you got like more downtime and you can go do different things, go check out different bars, go places you've never been. So that was fun because it allowed you to kind of live a little bit more because when you're on the road, you get home, you have two days off. One day you got to run errands. The other day you're sleeping. 
So there's not much room for you to like do anything. Right. So I did like that because it kind of gave you a little bit more space to live life. Yeah. Um, so as far as the, pro- the, not so much the production, but the way the, the business has transitioned from the time that you were there to, to what you're seeing now, what do you think about the current product and the way things are evolving, especially with the emergence of AEW? I think it's great. I think it's great. And I think that the more legitimate companies that we have, it protects the workers. It protects the wrestlers. It gives them options and opportunities and it makes the product overall stronger. I think that it's, it's much needed. Um, and I hope to see more in the future. Absolutely. When you went to, you touched earlier, when you went to AEW, what, what was that atmosphere like? Because I've heard different things. Okay, I want to hear what you heard first. <laughs> I mean, I, I've heard that it's it's laid back and, and, and not as structured. But I've also heard that it's it can be super strict depending on who you are, right. I guess. Right. I don't know. Um, I will say I did kind of have a little mini panic attack because I didn't know what to expect. And I was like, oh. I was a little overwhelmed <laughs> when I got there, but it is pretty laid back. But I think, I think it's laid back from my limited experience with it. I think if it is a little bit more rigid sometimes, I think because it is such a, it's a big production and they've kind of gone zero to hero. And I think it's got to be this way to make the ship float. So I don't, I don't know. I can't really expand on that more because I'm, it's been, you know, I haven't had much experience there, but it seems pretty, pretty laid back, like a good environment. So as far as in your wrestling career, has there been somebody that you want to wrestle or is there somebody that if you had the opportunity to jump back in the ring with mm. to have one more go at it with? Huh. I would love to work with Trish. I would love to work with Lita. I, a dream match would be me and Sasha Banks. Um, <laughs> Bianca Belair, Jade, in AEW. Um, let's see who else. Melina. I never got to wrestle Melina. Never. I would love to do that. Um, I don't know. There's there's many. There's many. And and. You know, those are all great choices. I've heard that, you know, uh, I talked to somebody uh, earlier today that said the same thing, that they'd love to work with Sasha Banks. And, and you know, I, I think that all the choices that, that you that you touched on are all really great choices. I mean, they're really all solid. <laughs> they, they're the whole, yeah. the women's division across brand is solid. <laughs> Pick one, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. But I think if I went back, I'd like to manage... I could see myself and managing. I'm trying to figure out. That would be interesting. I never have, but I think that I feel like it's time. I really like, um, what is her name? Scarlet. I like what she's doing. It's given very old school vintage wrestling um, management vibes. And I kind of like that. Yes. I think we need a little yeah. bit of that. It makes it, it, and, it makes and... it, um, it diversifies, you know, the brand because there are different types of women. There are different types of contributions and it makes it interesting. So yeah, I would love to do that. Yeah. And to your point, you know, I feel like the manager traditionally has been that, that one person that elevates yes. that superstar to another level. And then all while doing that, you're elevating yourself. So too. I like to think of managers. It's a cooking reference. I like to think of managers as the bay leaf of wrestling. You don't really know what it tastes like, but you know, it's always better with it. So you always want to add that. So you're welcome. (laughs) I love that analogy, though. That's perfect. (laughs) So as far as um, things that you've done since, I saw that that you acted some. Yes. And that you're an IFBB pro as well. Yes. Yes. Um, So I did a movie called Blood Circus. And... uh, it was starring Tom Sizemore 
and Kevin Nash was also in that as well. And I played Kevin Nash's girlfriend named Athena, and I helped him run an underground um, bare knuckles fight club. And uh, the fighters would fight to the death. And uh, Athena's kind of a tough, badass chick, gun-toting woman. And um, I actually get into a physical altercation with Tom Sizemore. And uh, I don't want to spoil it, but he kills me. So it was great. Mm. Um, And what I loved about that is that I got to kind of tap into some of my wrestling background, the physicality about that. I felt like, oh, well, I I can do this. And it's funny because production um, and the director was like, oh, are you going to be okay? Is this too much? And I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. It's cool. We can, we can try different things. Um, so yeah, I was pretty confident with that. And hopefully in the future, I'll have more opportunities to get into some action films. That would be yeah. very cool to see. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So in the world of wrestling, um, if you had to pick your Mount Rushmore of wrestlers, whether it be female, male, past or present, who would they be? Ah, uh, Kurt Angle, um, Austin, Chris Benoit, um, hmm, let's see, Ravishing Rick Rude. Um, I can definitely agree with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the obvious ones that people go for, like Warrior. I feel like those are the obvious ones, but uh, yeah, that that'll be my list. I can add more. I can keep going. It's hard to stop. <laughs> right, and there's so many great wrestlers out there like yourself that that deserve it. And and you know, I I think that, like you said, you know earlier, it's, Booker it's T. Evolved How in could such I not way. even put Booker in there? Booker is. <laughs> he's one of the greats for sure, obviously. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, you know, it's, it's evolved in such a way that, you know, it, the, the product has changed to benefit everyone now where it was one sided way back in the There's day. There's something for everyone. And like, it's so crazy because as a black woman in the wrestling business, like at the time they did, they were obviously like, you know, Jacqueline and Jazz, they came in at a time. But I think as far as the type of diva that I was, like I was the first black diva to be more of that. Oh, she's she's a diva. It was the sexy or, you know, watered down version. But I was the first, you know, so that that there's something there. But it's crazy because it, there's so many there's so much diversity now. And I don't I can't say before if there was a reason why there wasn't, I just know that there wasn't. And now there's a lot. And I, I love, I love to see it. And it's literally, there's something for everyone. There's like no excuse now to not succeed in that business. Like if you have an opportunity, you take it and you make the most of it. And there's not an excuse of why you can't, unless you just simply don't want to work. So, yeah. Exactly. Yep. So if, if AEW or WWE or, or another wrestling promotion were to call you up, would you ever go back for, yeah, in a heartbeat. You know, I feel like if you would have asked me this 10 years ago, no, no, no. But I'm at a point in my life where it's like I'm seeing how these things are evolving. And I just feel like I'm not done. And I feel like I still have so much more to give the rest of the universe. And I'm ready. I'm actually going to start in-ring training next week. Um, so, wow. yeah, yeah. And it's just... You know, it's surely for myself to see where I'm at and, uh, yeah, to take it from there. But, yeah, it's it's something that's been on my mind a lot lately, for sure. It would definitely be very interesting to see just because, you know, you've got a lot of people from, from that era, um, you know, like Steve Austin came back for one. Um, you've got a lot of people that are returning after a long hiatus. Yep. And it's it's interesting to see crowd reactions, especially to people you haven't seen in a long in the time. And it's, for a while. Yeah. it blows my mind. Like I've been gone for gosh, more than 15 years. And it's my DMS every day full. We miss you. We love you. We'd love to see you back. You can do this, go back. And I'm like, guys, it's, it's not that simple. Like I can't just say, Hey, you know what? I'm going to get my boots. I'm lacing them up. I'll be here. We're Wilkes-Barre. I'll be there. It's not, it's not like that, you know, but, um, I get it all the time. I get it all the time. And, you know, I think 
the biggest difference before is I felt like I didn't deserve to be there. And now I do. And I think that will translate vastly in my work. So if given the opportunity, you guys will not be disappointed. And I think that when it, when it does happen, you know, kind of will it into existence, right. but when it does happen, <laughs> right? Royal Rumble, you know, AEW. You never know. <laughs> it's, it's like they always say, and you always hear people say from the wrestling world, you, you never say never. never. You never know. Never, never, never. And it fits my life because that's kind of how I roll. <laughs> So what do you have coming up in the next uh, couple months? Let's see. Next couple months, like I said, I'm going to be doing some in-ring work. I'm going to start taking some bookings and getting myself prepped for spring signings. Um, working on my fitness all the time, always. I've got some projects coming up now, some potential um, promotional projects um, that I'm working on now. So You'll see some more stuff pop up on my social media soon about that. But I'm just, you know, putting all the irons in the fire and just getting ready physically, mentally, just because you never know when you get the call, it's time to go. So that's yeah, it. That's it. So I know I found you on Instagram. Where are you on social media? So you can also find me on Twitter. And I'm going to botch this because I don't even know what my Twitter handle is. I think it's Bajan Chrissy 83 B-A-J-A-N Chrissy. 83 and I have Facebook, but I don't go on there ever. So yeah, (laughs) (laughs) it's definitely a dying. Yes, it is. (laughs) Yes. But yeah, that's how you find me. Perfect. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate, uh, you know, being able to connect with you and learn some more about you and get your background. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me.